Today, we're going to talk about Mecca and the trade route problem or the uh, sea route problem, uh, if you wish. Hello, everyone. Uh, thank you so much, as always, for being here with us, and thank you for your interactions with us about this uh, very exciting series. Uh, today, we're going to talk about Mecca and the trade route problem, or the uh, sea route problem, uh, if you wish. And last time, we talked about the fact that a, a very uh, well-known and renowned scholar uh, in the field of early Islamic, uh, basically, history, if you wish, uh, apparently made a mistake, and we're talking about Patricia Crone. And that's where we left off last episode. And with me here, of course, to continue that discussion is our dear brother and colleague, Dr. Jay Smith. Dr. Jay, welcome back. You kind of like shocked us when you said that Patricia Crone made a mistake. <laughs> what are you talking about? Yeah, I'm kind of being audacious, aren't I, in saying that? But uh, listen, I have a lot of respect for Dr. Patricia Corona. Yeah. I know her personally. I've been in her office. She was the one that helped me put my my uh, debate together back in 1995 against Dr. Jamal Badawi. So I have I have an enormous amount of respect. And uh, what I'm going to say, I did that kind of tongue in cheek, and that is that she didn't go far enough. She didn't. Uh, she confronted Montgomery Watts' trade route theory, the last the land trade route theory, and showed that the land trade route could not have gone down to Mecca, off the plateau, and then come back up again to get up to Yathrib. It had to have gone by the sea. And so she just quickly said it went up the sea, but she made a one clerical error, uh, and that is, where did it go up the Red Sea? Where exactly? So let's put up a map. Let's go to the slide again, and let's go and see what the map shows us. Now, the Red Sea uh, via Mecca debunked. Remember, to understand the problem, we need to look at a topographical map. So I've got a topographical map here to see where the waterways are in the Red Sea. But before we do that, just look and see the cities we've got there. We've got Yathrib, and then you have Yanbu, and you know, or Yinbu, or how do you pronounce that? How do you? Yamba. Yamba. So Yamba is the one that, that, that supplies all the needs for Yathrib, because Yathrib is in the desert. I mean, in Hejaz, you call it Yumba, by the way, but uh, it's uh, in Yumba, classical okay. Arabic, Yumba. Yeah. Yumba. Yeah. And Jeddah, where you're from, is the city that supplies all the provisions yeah. and all Jeddah, the needs yeah. for Mecca, because Mecca has nothing. And that's why you need to have Jeddah there. And that's where you grew up, and that's why you were so close to it. So both Yumba and Jeddah are on the Red Sea, on the eastern coast of the Red Sea. And down here is Eden on the south. Now, Patricia Krone said that it uh, came, it went around Aden, went up to, uh, went up the Red Sea, and of course, the the comeback on that was okay. So it went up the Red Sea. Therefore, it stopped in Jeddah and it started Yunba, and therefore, those were well known places, and that's how Mecca became important because of Jeddah. And um, I would have no difficulty. I always did that as well until about two years ago when someone questioned me on that. Uh, uh, one of the comments that came out on the YouTube series when we were doing this, they said, well, what about Jeddah, Jay? You've forgotten Jeddah. Jeddah has been there. We know that Jeddah was there since the second century BC. And so I went up on Wikipedia, like my innocent that I was, I went up and given, sure enough, on Wikipedia, it does mention that Jeddah was in existence in the second century BC. It was the center of trade for Mecca. That's how Mecca got its important because of Jeddah and got its provisions, its food, its water, and all the rest to for provide for the camels from Jeddah. Of course, you always trust Wikipedia, right? And so I put that up there and I give that as an example. Wikipedia says it. No, no, you I, said 7th century, not 2nd century. 7th right. century, but from yeah. the 2nd century BC, it has been there is what these, what right. Wikipedia was saying. 2nd century BC. And I got hammered. People after people said, Jay, you're trusting Wikipedia. Did you look at the source for that reference? So I went back to the source and it was, of course, a Muslim source. All right. And I said, okay, well, what? maybe this Muslim knows something that I don't know. So I... Somebody come in, well, why don't you go back to the man that actually was, gave you, did you the teaching? He was the one that taught you. Gerald Hotting. Gerald Hotting. Why don't yeah. you look and see? Because he has written about Jeddah. Why don't you go right. back and see what he said? So I had one of my, my researchers there in London go and read his material. He said, oh, wait a minute. Gerald Hotting says that Jeddah didn't exist until the 8th century. 8th century AD. Mm -hmm. That means long after Muhammad. That means about 100 years after Muhammad. And that it was created to give provisions to Mecca. Which mean... Mecca, at least, either did not really need such route, uh, route from the sea, meaning wasn't that prominent, or wasn't created until the same time. So Mecca was created for a need, 
But Mecca needed also water and food and in order to exist. Provide that. That's why Jeddah had to be created. Till so, this day, by the way. Till this day. Right. In fact, you know that because yeah. that's where all the desalination plants are. Right. There's huge desalination plants all around Jeddah to supply Mecca, to supply all the Zumzum well uh, and with all its water. So I decided to go back and, and, say, and, and, and then I got a, another reference. People said, have you looked at a topographical map, Jay? That answers your query. Look at a topographical map. So they sent me this map here, and they said, look at the waterways on it. So I wanted to look at the waterways. So here are the, the deep uh, water channel. That's where I put the red there. This is where the, day, the ships today go. They are huge ships. You saw one of those that got stuck in the Suez Canal right, right. Uh, a number of years ago. Well, that's where they go today, but that's not where they went in the 7th century. We didn't have ships like that in the 7th century. So what about the 7th century ships that use sails? Well, they went up these channels where the golden arrows are. Notice that? What side of the sea are they on? On the west side. On the west side, on the African side. Exactly. Why? Because they had to stay close to the shore. Because they couldn't go as fast as the diesel ships do today. They all were blown by the wind, which means they needed provisions along the way, don't they? They needed provisions. So, unlike the eastern Arabian shore, which was arid with no fresh water and thus few people, the western African shore, which is on the left, had plenty of fresh water and had larger populations. What's more, the west coast had easily accessible ports, and we know their names. We know the names. Let's go to the next slide. You can see right over here. Let's look at that. Look at let's look at those ports. So we, we did. I did. This is the. Uh, I did this research uh, when this came up, and I realized I've got to find out where these uh, where these ports are that all these small ships that needed to stand go in every day were. Well, let's take a look at them. When you look at them, the five there are five coastal cities that go along the western coast or along the Red Sea on the African side. The first one is known as Asab. There it is right down there. And that's in uh, uh, Eritrea today. Uh, look at the dates that we have historical support for it. All the way back to the 3rd century BC, Right. we have references to Asab. Which, which is important because if Mecca was such an important town, why don't we have something similar to Asab, for instance, listed? Bingo. Because yeah. remember, we don't have anything from Mecca until 741 AD, That's which right. is the 8th century. We can go all the way to the 3rd century BC for Asab. Adjulus that Patricia Krohn found was on almost all the trading documents. It then controlled the trade from 79 AD on. It was really the major place for them from 79 AD. That's mm -hmm. the 1st century AD that you had. And that's also in Eritrea. And then in Sudan, you have the city of Swakin, 170 AD. So it became important another century later. Why? Because they needed more ports along, because these smaller ships could, could not go for long distances. So it was in created in 170. This is long before Islam came into being. This is the second century. So we're about 500 years earlier yet. Then you have two other ports, Berenice, which is in Egypt, which has been dated back to 275 BC. That's the third century BC. And the last one would be Safaga, which is 282 BC. Third century BC, also in Egypt, all on the West Coast. Now, their dates all predates Islam. All five, look at them, all five are a day's distance from each other. Wait, can you see that? They're almost equidistant. That is one day's sailing ship so that a ship could make it day after day after day, get the provisions every day. That's why they had to create those they other... stop, they offload, they get things, and move on. They get provisions, they get provisions, they get provisions, right. and that's how they could do it. That's why they're equidistant. And they've been doing this since the first century AD, long before Islam. So Patricia Krohn didn't do this, didn't think about this. But here's the question. On the other side, which is the eastern side, we do have Yanbe, uh, which is known, well known as the city that supplied Yathrib. What about Jeddah? Supplying Mecca. Supplying Mecca? Nothing until the 8th century. Nothing until the end. We have no history for either Jeddah or Mecca until the 8th century. More specifically, until 741. Well, look what we have to do then with Mecca and Jeddah. Why? Because neither had water nor a population large enough to accommodate the early trade. Well, let's just get rid of Mecca and Jeddah right off the map. Now, when you do that, of course, the question, the million dollar question, without Mecca, what then happens to 7th century Islam? Well, you can see what happens to it. It just basically eradicates, destroys it. 
And this is the problem. No one's looking at maps. No one's looking at the historical context. If you're going to make a claim, as the standard Islamic narrative does, if you're going to make the claim that there was a place called Mecca, that it was right there in the, uh, at the beginning or the center of the trade, you're going to have to support that. Patricia Crone pretty much shut down the idea of a land trade route that went from uh, Aden to Sana to Najran to Taif down to Mecca. We saw from those topographical maps, it'd have to go down 3,000 feet, then come back 3,000 feet to get up to Yathrib, then to Tabuk, then to Petra, and then to Gaza, and on out to the Mediterranean. She shut that down. We then shut down the sin sifters shut this down two years ago by looking at the sea trade, you can see that all of the trade was on the African coast. And why on the African coast? Because it had water. And if you have water, then you have vegetation. Arab, the Arab side of the, the eastern side had no water, and that's why there was no trade that went up that route. Now can you understand why all the channels are on the left and not on the right? Absolutely. Fascinating, of course, and uh, just give us a glimpse of what we will be covering next time. Well, I want to, I want to <laughs> take this one step further. Uh, I think if you're going to talk about water, we need to understand what that whole premise is. What do we mean by water? Okay. Very good. All right. Thank you so much. As always, uh, we uh, thank you for following us and thank you for watching. Until next time, have a blessed day.